Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to a video where I overview the new Persians. Persians have been in Age of Empires 2 for a very long time, but with the now new expansion, the Mountain Royals expansion, Persians have received a rework. And if you've been around the community for a bit, this has been teased, I believe, on the subreddit, and this has been a long time coming, I feel, as Persians. While they've never been a poor civilization, they never really fit in with today's meta, which has been... Let's say power crept a little bit. Every civ's pretty strong. So the devs decided to give my lovely Persian some love. Let's break it down. So to start it all off, there's a lot of consistencies with what Persians were before, which I felt is very important. It is reworked, yes, but the theme of how the civilization works is still there. So let's start with the economic side. Persians still start with plus 50 wood and plus 50 food, which makes it one of the smoother starts in the game. Whether that is an early barracks, an early dock, Having the extra wood is helpful, as well as having the food means that you don't need to force drop food at all, really. And of course, having the 50 food makes your start a whole lot smoother. Now, many of you might remember, when the Definitive Edition first came out in 2019, the Persians had a greater work rate on their town center and their dock starting in the Dark Age. And it was 5% in Dark Age, 10% in Feudal, 15% in Castle, and then 20% in Nim. A year or so later, they nerfed that and they removed any of the Dark Age bonus, but they have reverted this change. So they are back to having the 5% work rate on those things in Dark Age, 10% in Feudal, 15% in Castle, and then 20% in Nim. This is good, in my opinion. Um, listen, let's face it. There's been a lot of expansions that have come out since the Definitive Edition was released. There's a lot of crazy bonuses involved now. And yeah, when they nerfed it, Persians were really strong with their eco and wasn't necessarily an issue that maybe their options were limited. It has, over the last few years, though, become more of an issue for the Persians. So I felt like they needed something more. So really smooth economy for the Persians then. To give you an idea of why that 5% is helpful in Dark Age, if you're going up on 21 population to go to Feudal Age, you will have saved about 24 seconds of game time compared to any other civilization. That right there means you basically have an additional villager. So Persians gain a villager lead if they have a smooth Dark Age with this 5% bonus. If you combine this with the 50 extra wood and food, that gives the Persians really nice bonus on hybrid maps especially. And a lot of people forget, this work rate applies to the docks as well. So they definitely have gone up on the Nomad tier list, as well as really any map that has water and land, like maybe four lakes or cross. But their economy was not the only thing that was improved. The Persians also received Parthian tactics available in Castle Age. Now this is an interesting one because Parthian Tactics is an Imperial Age technology for every other civilization, and it adds armor to your Cav Archers. It also adds plus two attack versus pikemen for your Cav Archers, but that is not something you really research Parthian Tactics for in most cases. I actually didn't know that. This is embarrassing. Persians do still lack Bracer in the tech tree though, which means they are down that plus one attack and plus one range that a lot of civilizations that are considered to be good Cav Archer civilizations have. But if you think about it, this can start the ball rolling on some attacks and give you a much tankier Cav Archer army in combination with the cavalry from the Persian stable. In general, I like this change because it spices up the Persians a little bit and incentivizes more cavalry play, but it doesn't completely change their identity of lacking Bracer, which I think is important to the civilization. Now, what else they have that adds to their identity is cavalry generates five gold when killing enemy military units. Now, this is an interesting one because there's another unit in the game for the Tatars called the Keshik, and the Keshik receives gold when attacking an enemy unit. The difference here is you need to kill a unit in order to get the gold, and this does apply to things like scouts. So things like a Persian scout rush can give you a nice little boost of gold, and generally you're going to be going for knights and camels, which means that this is going to apply. This kind of reminds me of the recent Spanish change where the Spanish received some gold per technology, as crazy as it sounds to get gold when fighting in a war game, I do feel like that five gold, while it's strong, is just going to be a nice little boost to make things feel a bit more smooth for the Persians. The next new thing the Persians receive is the ability to make the Caravanisserai, which is a building that increases the trade speed within a 10 tile radius. This is now the second Civ to receive access to this building. The other civilization is the Hindustanis. And I like this change because the Persians have reasons to need a lot of gold in the late game. And it just kind of spices things up in Imperial Age where things have in the past felt a little one-sided for the Persians. The next thing is important. They still have the War Elephant for their unique unit. 
Guys, I was really concerned. No offense to people out there who have left comments to suggest this, but many people have pointed out that the war elephant isn't something you see that commonly, and we should replace it with something else, as if they didn't have a childhood built on making war elephants and stampeding whole economies. Listen, it's true that the war elephant is a unit that is seen very rarely, but that's okay. I don't think we have to see every unit in our game, especially with how many civs we have now all the time. So the chonkers, the elite war elephants, are still there, but they have replaced the Mahout's Hi, unique tech. Instead of having a unique tech, which makes your war elephants faster when you rarely go for war elephants, they have looped in the war elephant speed with the elite upgrade. And instead of Mahout's, we now have Citadels, a very interesting technology. With Citadels, castles fire bullets, plus four attack, plus three verse rams, and plus three verse infantry. And the castles then receive minus 25% bonus damage. Shout out to the long timers who also remember when Persians had boiling oil, a technology that was supposed to help their castles against siege. This is, I guess, a better version of that, and it's certainly more noticeable. Competitively, I don't think we're going to see this researched a lot because high level players are normally controlling the map with armies and getting defensive upgrades normally just extends to maybe masonry or something. I know that everyone wants to get excited about the firing bullets aspect of this, but I actually think the most effective part of this upgrade is the reduction in bonus damage. Normally, a trebuchet does 424 damage to a castle per shot, but to a Persian castle with citadels, it only does 355. This means a Persian castle needs three more shots to go down. That is significant. But for people who really like to fortify up in case of attack, this could be pretty strong. And on the back of a good Persian economy, getting defensive castles and going for citadels could mean that a surprise attack doesn't do quite as much damage to you. The Persians do still have the commander on upgrade where their archer line gold cost is replaced by additional wood cost, which is interesting and I'm glad they kept it. But now the Persians basically have the ability to make the archer line with only wood, granted it is still just crossbowmen, combined with their cavalry generating gold when attacking enemy military units and the crazy eco. Combining this with citadels and the defensive measures that provides, Persians might have one of the better post and play games on land. Spamming crossbows and hussars is going to be really tough to stop, but then your hussars are going to give you a gold trickle as you attack. So I definitely want to have Persians in post imp from here on out. Please and thank you, random generator. Okay, so they kept the war elephant, but the Persians did receive something else that's new with this rework, and that is the Savar. The Savar has replaced Paladin in the Persian stable. So you would go from Knight, upgrade to Cavalier, and then spend 1,000 food and 600 gold to go to Savar, which is a different unit. This is described as a powerful all-purpose cavalry unit, and of course, similar to Paladin, it says weak versus halberdiers, heavy camel riders, and monks. So the Savar has 15 HP and two attack less than a standard Paladin, but has an additional plus one melee and plus one pierce armor. Normally, a fully upgraded Arbalest does three damage to a Paladin, so a Paladin would take 60 Arbalest shots to go down. A Savar only gets two damage per Arb hit, so it takes 83 shots to go down. One Savar will take out eight Arbalesters on its own, while the old Persian Paladin would die with six Arbs remaining. In melee, the difference between a Savar and a Paladin is pretty negligible. Because of the extra armor, the Savar beats a regular Paladin in the 1v1 fight though, with 9 HP left. This is only one hit, so with bigger groups of units, Paladin can still win because of... Pathing. Persians still have the Knight plus 2 attack versus Archer's bonus. This does, to my knowledge, apply to the Savar. And obviously that is a team bonus, so it would apply to ally Knights across the way. In conclusion... I think the Persians needed a bit of a buff, and I think this is more than enough to get them back to being playable in the competitive scene. Instead of just knights, cav archers are now a good play in Castle Age, so they're no longer forced to play into a one-dimensional unit comp in the mid-game. With the way these bonuses are structured, I think that this civilization is incentivized to go for a longer Castle Age, adding a lot of villagers behind the faster working TCs, and making lots of army from the archer ranges and the stables. Their Imperial Age play is still a bit one-dimensional, but with a stronger later Castle Age with Cav Archers with Parthian and still with strong Knights, I feel like the Persians are definitely in a better spot and can pack a lot more of a punch. I've been around the block a few times though, and I am wondering how balanced this will be long-term. And I say that because the Persians have received more unit options, 
but also they've received an economic buff at the exact same time. And when the devs had removed the faster working TCs in Dark Age with the Persians back in 2020, my thought process was either give that back to them, which they've now done, or increase their unit options. So it does feel like here they've kind of had both. And like a lot of civilizations that can gain an early eco lead in this game, it's sometimes very hard to stop them. Overall, though, I love this change. It is long overdue, and I'm excited to play Persians yet again. In the event that any of this is too strong, I'm sure the devs could dial back the eco side again. But honestly, it feels good that they have reworked the civilization in a way that makes it more exciting. They have maintained the nostalgia aspect and the late game strength of the war elephant while introducing some new things to the Persian tech tree to make it feel more at home in 2023. So my question to you guys is, what do you think about this? There's a few things here from Parthian and Castle Age to the cavalry generating gold to the Caravaniserai, which took me five minutes to find in the tech tree. For some reason, it's next to the Wonder. I don't know why. Uh, make sure to give me your thoughts. Uh, let me know what you thought of this brief overview, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll, of course, have my eye on the Persians and be bringing some commentary to you soon so we can see how this all plays out in a competitive format. Or maybe even Loey the Legends. Because if there's one thing I know about Loey the Legends, they need their TCs to work faster. They need the extra wooden food in Dark Age. They will love castles firing bullets. And of course, one extra upgrade in the Archer range in Castle Age, baby. Click it. We've got to research it all. Let's go. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.